today. We're gonna work on building a enclosure box for my new CNC router. And what this is gonna do is it will prevent the dust, it will prevent the noise, and then also give me a safe place to kind of watch and monitor it and then have a um, plexiglass to kind of protect me if anything were to break or fly off. So what I already done is went to the store and I bought some of the components I'm gonna need today. And I'm gonna do the very basic shell. That's all I'm gonna do today. So this was a four by eight sheet of three quarter maple ply. And then I have the acrylic sheet I'll be using. Here's the, the brand. So it's 24 inches by 40 inch, and it's uh, 220 as far as the thickness. So this should be plenty thick for sound and then strength. So over here, I'm keeping this video very basic with as far as editing and not using screenshot and stuff like that. But this was the sheet I made up really quick when I went to Lowe's so I could have everything pre kind of cut out. So what I had them do, since I don't have my truck anymore, I had them cut all these pieces <clears throat> ahead of time and I had them cut it a quarter inch longer than what I need to make sure that I can come back and clean it up myself. So same thing with the acrylic sheet, I pre mapped everything out. So I'll go ahead and cut that down and I'll insert these into the door panels and side panels. And then I have all my parts laid out as well to get the most out of the sheet. So today we'll just do the basic shell. I won't do any of the slides. So that way I can just get this thing rolling and making some good parts off it. So that's what we'll be doing today. So now I have kind of the design in play. Enough of the blabbering. Let's go ahead and uh, go to the garage. For thought when you are cutting acrylic it turns into molten lava and don't do this while wearing a tank top because then you will burn your skin so we have our two pieces here that are good as they are and then this is our 11 and a quarter piece but this is not done it needs to be 1875 this way so I'll readjust the fence we'll make one more pass on these two and then we'll be done and we can move to the, the plywood, so. So there's our scrap. Maybe we'll make a door on the top or something, I don't know. But. This actually folds away and the cut is actually really, really clean. There was no cracking at all. So that worked out pretty good. So this is this. Now I'm going to double check my measurements now with real life inlays. And then I'm going to come back to here and then I'm going to check out my parts layout. Make sure everything's all good to go. And then we'll start busting out that three quarter. Before I cut these, I'll just take an orbital sander and just go over the corner so that way nothing's up against the fence and gives my measurements all false readings and whatnot. So I'll do that really quick and then I'll come back and cut. Looks like according to our plans, the top, bottom, and back, there's no plexiglass. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut those to size and then we'll come back and on the last and the leftover sheets, then we'll We'll break down all these side panels just to double check our measurements.
All right, so my table saw fence does not go as long as I need it to go on this cut. So we will do it on the circular saw. So I'm just gonna mark off my 33 and a half. Okay, so since I'm freehanding, I'll when I say freehanding, I'm just gonna use a circular saw. So I have a fence here. I have this fence exactly set to where my blade is on the right side of the line. So to make this simple, because I have three pieces that I gotta cut all the same same way, is I took the tape measure and measured this side, which I got the side good. So I was 28 and 7 eighths, and this minus symbol just means I'm just shy of the line. That's just my way of kind of doing it really quick. And then I go to this side and just match it up exactly 28, 7 eighths minus. So, with this clamp down, now I could ride my circular saw against this guide. And with this measurement exact, is I don't have to re-measure this line out the next board. I could just immediately put this from here at seven, or the 28, 7 eighths marks, and then uh, that way I can make them all exact. So, I'll go ahead and uh, cut them all out right now. Perfect, so. Got that good? Now, we want to hold this piece because we're making more cuts off this board so I didn't want it to get damaged, so I gotta hold it down. So, now that that step's done, basically just gonna rinse and repeat that for the other two boards. Got it all mapped out. We're gonna be perfect on extra material. This section right here is gonna be what's left over. So I'm gonna save this, I'm gonna cut this down into those little door handles on the front cabinet doors but we have a rough line. I just measure from here and then I give myself a hundredth out gap in between roughly just for my blade width. But then I know, so these are my vertical pieces for the door. Then I have the horizontal pieces. I have the side pieces, but this helps me kind of look at the board and see what's going to be like my easiest cut. So all of these are four inches wide. So I'm going to rip these all down four inches and then I'll come back on the miter saw and I'll just cut them to length. Basically all the boards will be that same concept. Like these are all three inch and three eighths. And then I might actually cut this one this way first to hold this piece as a nice good scrap piece. And then I'll cut them to strips. And then these ones are the side pieces that again, I'll cut this at six inches wide. And then this little piece on the end is what's extra. So making this a little bit easier for myself. And now they're already all labeled, so when I do cut them off, I know what they're supposed to go to. So we'll just hop to it, and then from there out, we'll lay it all out, and then we'll uh, start making the grooves for the, for the plexiglass. So we got all of our parts laid out. So here would be the front door and then the side pieces. So the plexiglass that we cut out, go right over here. Now, if this was up to me, I would have more, I would like an inch overhang, but to buy the sheet I bought, but being two foot by four foot, this is just what I have to work with. So as you see, as far as the height, I'm plenty, plenty overlap on the height. But this one, this one looked good all around. Um, so I've been debating to myself because I'm just debating on doing the routing or that groove on the inside. 
I'm going back to the idea of just putting it in like this and then just screwing it in place with a small nice screw. I have enough that it shouldn't crack. The reason I'm changing my mind is for whatever reason, I mean this is pretty thick stuff, but for whatever reason a bit breaks or I don't know, it gets damaged. I like the idea that I could easily just replace it without having to dismantle the door and then all that all that mess. So I'll just leave it like this. Um, the only thing to think about now is I'll finish the wood as far as clear coating it and then put this on so that we don't see two weird borders. But it should be good. Um, then I was thinking if this isn't good, I probably don't want to screw down into this and risk cracking this. I could take a piece of wood and basically um, try to give you the illusion but I could basically cap it in like this and then screw this down and pinch it down. But shouldn't shouldn't be too big of a deal. The size should be enough. But um what else? I think I'm gonna put the camera down and just get going. So for the assembly of this, you can either just pocket hole um pocket hole these together, which I think I'm going to do. And if you want an added bonus, you could add a biscuit, which is this little puppy here. So that would just go in between. So I think I might just do that. I already have all my stuff set up from a pro previous project. So I'll just biscuit the joints real quick. That's my little biscuit joiner, which is already set to three quarters. So it should be ready just to go. And then pocket hole. And then once the frames are built and done, I'll just shoot them with, or sand them, and I'll just shoot them with clear coat. But let's go. Biscuits and installed. So now I'm just gonna relay this out, and I had numbered numbered my boards so I can put them back exactly how they were. So what you want to do? There's always a better side to the plywood. So this side is pretty good. So I might look at the back side, but the reason you want to do this is if you're putting pi uh, if you're putting pocket holes, you want to choose the side that's worse. Like that's a good example. See that's tear out that wasn't able to clean up from when I bought it from Lowe's because their blade was like horrible. So this will be the back side. So knowing that I want that to be the back side, I'll go ahead and just flip this one over and I'll just flip all these pieces. Um, so this piece will come over here. This piece goes like that like that. So now when I retrace this out, the biscuits still line up because it's on the same plane. But now when I do my pocket holes, um, again, this could be the ugly side that no one sees. So I'll do that to all of them. I'll find the better side. And then from this point is it's plywood. So you kind of, you're going into end grain no matter what direction you go. So it's just my preference. I'm gonna do the pocket holes on the vertical style part of it. And if you wanted to, you can come down, but I, I like sucking it like this. Um, if I could re put uh, analogy, or what's the word I'm trying to think of? The analogy, the thought process is if you had two pocket holes going like this, you're biting towards this which is not bad. I like the idea of taking this piece as the center, like your core, and I'm pulling everything to the core, not crushing it. So like, here's my core, here's the screws. I'm pulling it in this way, and then the screws are like this, so then I'm pushing it in like that, making a nice tight frame. Um, it might not matter, but 
that's what I'm gonna do so I'll go and put this up and then I'll be going on the pocket hole I'll go ahead from here, the supplies we're going to use, just glue. If you have a clamp, that helps you out pretty good to get a clamp, like one of these, where it goes inside the pocket hole and you can get the joint really nice and tight. This might not go big enough though for what I'm doing. So you could always just use a regular clamp like this. Both these will probably work. So I'll go ahead and... Uh, Start putting together the doors and keep keep this party going. Alright, all done with that. I was kind of going really, really quick with it. So, I'll just come back when this glue dries and sand it down. And then, we're ready to put the acrylic on it. So, we'll continue this tomorrow. Later.